Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we start the fourth capsule of this course in which the first lecture, the seventh lecture is on aerofoils or airfoils. This particular uh, content has been essentially created by Shishir Damani, a summer intern who came and worked during this summer. Let us first have a very quick overview on what we are going to see in this lecture. First of all, we will understand what an aerofoil is, although many of us know about it, but still we will go for a formal introduction to airfoil. Then we look at the terminologies and nomenclature for uh, a typical airfoil. We look at some historical information about how airfoils came about and how they were developed. And then we move on to the bulk of the lecture which will be on the various types of airfoils. So, there is a list of aerofoils mentioned there. We will look at each category and try to understand the features and the requirement for each of these types. And finally, we look at some modern developments towards the end. Okay. So, what is an airfoil? It is basically a shape or a profile. But then there are, uh, there are two spellings for airfoil. Some people call it aerofoil, some call it airfoil. The difference between the two is only uh, the British English and the American English. In the American English, we say airfoil and in the British English, we say aerofoil. They are the same. All right. So, basically an airfoil is a cross section of the wing which is normal to the span. The span of the wing is essentially the lateral length of the aircraft. So, the distance from one tip to the other tip is called as the wing span. And if you take a cross section normal to that, now the span can also be like this sweep forward or like this sweep back. Whatever be the case, if you take a cross section perpendicular or normal to the span, you get a shape. That shape is called as an airfoil and there are different types of shapes which are different airfoils which are prevalent. Okay. So, let us look at the terminology. The meaning of the word terminology is description of various elements, various features and what they are called, what are their names. Because we will use these names and it is important that everybody understands uh, what these names mean. So, for that we have a short video clip. Typical airfoil such as a wing from the side, several design characteristics become obvious. You can see that there is a difference in the curvatures or camber of the upper and lower surfaces of the wing. The camber of the upper surface is more pronounced than that of the lower surface, which is usually somewhat flat. The two ends of the airfoil profile also differ in appearance. The end which faces forward in flight is called the leading edge and is rounded. The other end, called the trailing edge, is narrow and tapered towards the rear. The cord line is a reference line drawn from the center of the leading edge straight through the wing to the trailing edge. The distance from this cord line to the upper and lower surfaces of the wing shows the magnitude of the upper and lower camber at any point. Another reference line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge is the mean camber line. This mean line is equidistant at all points from the upper and lower surfaces. I will pause it here so that I can give you some time to look at the various uh, 
nomenclature items. You have an upper surface and a lower surface. You have a leading edge and a trailing edge. The leading edge is the one that is facing the oncoming wind. There is a line, a theoretical line, a straight line joining the leading edge and the trailing edge. And as you can see, that line can actually go outside the airfoil, such as in the rear bottom portion of this one. That is why we say it is a reference line and that is called as a cord. But you can also draw a line which is the blue line in this figure and that blue line is equidistant from the top and the bottom surface all along the length of the aerofoil. So, the vertical distance above the camber line to the top surface and the distance from the camber line to the bottom surface at the same location is going to be the same. So, this particular line is called as the mean camber or the, uh, the camber line okay. and the maximum camber is the maximum distance between the camber line, the blue line in this figure and the cord line, the red dotted line in this figure. And there will be one specific place at which this maximum camber will be located that is a very important point. It is called as the point of location of maximum camber. So, as we move this point forward and backward, the aerofoil characteristics will change, the behavior of the aerofoil will change. Okay. Further, you can also from the, from the cord line, you can actually go perpendicular to the cord line along the length of the aerofoil. But now, in this case for example, the distance between the cord line and the top surface and the cord line and the bottom surface at the same point, it may not be the same. For instance, we can see that in this uh, case, in most cases, the distance from the cord line to the top surface is more than that from the cord line to the bottom surface. So, this total distance is called as the thickness. The thickness will also become maximum at some point. That maximum thickness expressed as a percentage of the cord length is called as the thickness of the aerofoil. 15 percent, 18 percent, 20 percent and again the location of that maximum thickness may not be the same as the location of the maximum cord that also plays a very important role in the behavior. But not all aerofoils have to be like this. Okay. This is a typical aerofoil, but today we will see some very interesting and very different aerofoils about which mostly we do not see in textbooks. So, I will once again repeat that uh, the students who are attending this course, you are expected to be going through the corresponding chapter that I am covering in the class from the uh, or the main reference book by Anderson. You are supposed to do that as a self study, you are supposed to read it yourself. And in the classroom, we are going to try to reinforce some of the important points and also look at points which may not be explained. And of course, uh, as you all know, there are student teams who are going to do the assignment on gathering more information on the topics which I cover in the class with more detail and adding it as their assignment. So, this is a three level process of learning. The first one is what you hear in the class and then it is uploaded. The second one is what is there in the textbook which is a self study. And the third one is through the self study folder that I upload for each capsule. And finally, at the end of the course, we will have content available. Very soon, I am going to upload the assignments which other students have given. So, let us see. Just like we all have families, aerofoils also belong to particular families. Some families of aerofoils are very well known. For example, we have all heard about this Naka series. There is a Naka 4 family, there is a Naka 5 family, 6 family, 7, 8, etc., etc. But there are many other families about which 
perhaps you may not know and this is not the exhaustive list. There could be other families of aerofoils uh, which may be there and whichever team gets this assignment they would be uh, requested to go and locate the detail about those families, new families or maybe uh, elaborate on the families which are mentioned here, but not explained. So, because of limited time we will look at only a few families. Obviously, I will not look at the Naka family because every textbook, every website, every source describes the Naka series. So, we will not touch that ok. We will just tell you that you look at this textbook there is a chapter 5.20 on historical note and there these families are explained quite beautifully. We will look at some new families or families about which you do not know. Does anybody know about the Seri nomenclature or the Seri family? Do you know what is Seri? Solar Energy Research Institute ok. So, these are aerofoils which have been developed especially for solar energy ok. So, this is a agency that looks at alternative power generation systems, alternative uh, systems and they have uh, classified special aerofoils for wind turbine blades. So, for a wind turbine the purpose of a wind turbine is different from a wing. The purpose of the rotor of a wind turbine is to extract energy from the ambient air even at low speeds ok and also to ensure that as the speed changes we do not get too much of variation. So, these aerofoils have been decide have been designed based on these requirements in mind. So, you have a thin aerofoil family and a thick aerofoil family. Uh, the thin aerofoil family is used for the medium blades or small size blades which are going to rotate. The large blades are going to go going to rotate and when they rotate because of their size their their span they will generate a lot of power. So, there they have gone for thick aerofoil families ok. So, uh, more details will be available later on. I just want you to understand what are the characteristic features provided in these particular aerofoils ok. So, for example, you have uh, locations in the front or near the root where you would like to have power produced even at lower winds or medium medium winds ok. So, the cross section at the location near the hub belongs to a particular uh, type as well as at the tips you are very far away from the root anyway and by virtue of uh, 2 pi r effect the rotation effect itself you are generating power. So, we would like to control the peak power that is produced by the rotor. So, there there are different types of aerofoils. So, as you can see there are thicker aerofoils towards the root and thinner aerofoils towards the tip. So, using various seri family members along the span you can custom design a blade for a turbine. And this is a huge area of research and in our department also we have some of my colleagues who specialize in design of uh, wind turbine blades as well as in the fabrication and testing ok. Right. I want to also introduce you to a very interesting family which is popular with the people who do aero modeling. They are called as Klein Fogelman aerofoils based on the person who suggested. So, they were devised uh, around 50 years ago and uh, they are interestingly aerofoils with steps ok. We are all conditioned to understand that aerofoil should be smooth, but here we have intentionally provided steps one step or two steps ok. So, we need to understand what these are and that is a very nice video which shows the aerodynamics of these aerofoils. Can we increase the audio? Which is a utility airfoil very popular on scratch built planes. This airfoil is known to have a higher stall resistance than a conventional airfoil. Some speculations on the mechanisms behind this airfoil suggest that a small trapped vortex forms behind this step which somehow increases the lift being generated. Somebody As you can see in this test however, the area behind the step forms a pocket of air which appears to be stationary with no vortex present. 
When the airfoil stalls and airflow separation occurs, the pocket quickly disintegrates. At lower angles of attack, we can see a significant amount of turbulence being created in the wake, far more than observed with the regular airfoil. Okay, so this is a very special airfoil series, mostly designed for model aircraft. They will have a very poor lift to drag ratio because drag will be quite high and lift is going to be relatively less. But as I uh, as I heard and also you must have heard, these aerofoils are much better at higher angle of attacks. They are able to withstand and the reason for that is the mechanism of creation of a vortex bubble in the region behind the step. Okay. So, these are very common for remotely controlled planes. Although we have not seen many aircraft flying with these kind of uh, aerofoils, but if you look on the internet, if you look at the forums which talk about RC planes, apparently these are very easy to make. Okay, it's like layering up material. Balsa slabs can be simply layered and stuck with little bit of rounding, so it's very easy to make. And there are many many series, as you can see, there are some which are having two steps on the top, one on the bottom like the KFM 8 series, there are some which have got curvature also. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is one very interesting series and then you have KFM 11 which has got not one but one, two, three, four steps on the top surface and the bottom surface is flat. So, the mechanism of generation of lift and the mechanism, the aerodynamics of this particular configuration of this particular layout. Uh, is such that it is helpful in a certain class of aircraft mostly for remotely controlled. Okay. All right, let us look at another interesting series called as the Göttingen aerofoils which were created in a university in Germany uh, mainly through wind tunnel testing because in 1910 we did not have CFD available to us. So, these were very painstakingly developed through minute and very careful wind tunnel testing. So, they also have one digit, two digit, three digit numbers. Okay. So, this is one cross section, Bodingen 622 aerofoil. We observe here that the bottom is almost flat, slight curvature in the front and the top one is having a good curvature. Now, what is meant by this one series, one digit, two digit, three digit? So, this is something I want you to find out and upload on Moodle. So, you are going to search for this kind of aerofoils, you are going to tell us what are these one digit, two digit, three digit numbers and what is the relationship. So, for example, Gottingen 622, does the number 6, 2 and 2 mean something? Okay. Just like in the Naka series, you know that each number means something. So, do they mean something here? All those details I would like you to upload on the Moodle page. Moving on to another family called as the Epler aerofoil family. Now, this is a, an aerofoil family which has been designed using mathematics, using what is called as a conformal transformation or conformal mapping. So, what is conformal mapping? Something has to conform or remain the same between the base and the mapped surface. So, in this case what we do is we consider a domain which is a simple rectangular domain. Here we see in the top half of the uh, figure you see a simple grid with perpendicular lines horizontal and vertical. On the bottom the same grid has been transformed using a mathematical transformation. Okay. So, y is equal to a sin theta x is equal to uh, or uh, you know something like that some kind of a transformation can be used to create something. So, each point or each intersection in the bottom grid corresponds to a particular point in the top grid and the transformation happens through a function f. But notice that the perpendicularity at the junctions is still maintained. Okay. To a large extent the perpendicularity is maintained. So, this is the meaning of conformal. So, using some mathematical expressions you have um, a transformation available, but the functions are such that they preserve the local angles. So, using these kind of expressions, now when the uh, initial studies of aerodynamics started, there was a huge contribution by mathematicians. 
so when we were students for example there used to be a subject called as wing theory and this uh, there used to be Zhukovsky aerofoils and uh, some other aerofoils which are very theoretical okay practically you do not see these aerofoils exactly because for example if you take a classical transformation you will find that a Zhukovsky aerofoil has got a cusp at the trailing edge it is very difficult to make a cusp at a trailing edge in a practical aerofoil. So, these are theoretical aerofoils, but they were suggested or proposed by mathematicians to do a analytical study of aerodynamics. So, uh, for details there is a YouTube uh, link which I will put here and you can have a uh, more look at it. The practical application of such aerofoils is fairly limited. Okay, except for certain applications, but basically they are meant for some theoretical optimization. So, here is one aerofoil which is an Appler 1211 aerofoil again you will tell us what these numbers mean and what the categories are. Okay. So, then there are so many so many other families, we will not spend too much time on other families. <laughs>